Hey everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to reset the world on your Minecraft server. This is a pretty quick tutorial, but first we do have a sponsor and that sponsor is Apex Minecraft Hosting. If you own a Minecraft server where you can reset your world very, very simply and very, very easily, check out Apex at the first link down below, thebreakdown.xyz slash Apex. We actually love Apex so much that we host our own server, play.breakdowncraft.com on them. So again, if you want a server that is up all the time, 24 hours, 7 days a week, is just incredible, has great hardware, all of that stuff, Apex Minecraft Hosting is the way to go. You can check out Apex again at the first link down below the breakdown xyz slash apex whoa rover rover over there almost messing up that did you hear that that was loud oh, i wonder if the mic got that anyway nevertheless we're going to go ahead and reset our worlds in minecraft today but first i do need to prove to you that the world is reset and the only way that i know how to do that is to uh well how do i put this start the server up right so we're going to start the server up we're going to join the server and then after we join the server i'll be able to reset the worlds and then show you that the world is in fact reset that's kind of the only way i know that's happening so let's go ahead start this server up i'll do a quick jump cut until it is up and then we'll be able to join it there we go the server is now started i'll drag it over to here i've already got minecraft open this is minecraft 1.15.2 not that that matters but that's what it is we're gonna go ahead and jump into multiplayer you're going to direct connect just to my local IP address because that's where this is hosted. If you had an Apex server or something like that, you would paste that IP there. But nevertheless, once we're in game, we just need to be able to see. Yes, I was testing this with admin shop a few days ago. I've since removed the plugin, but you can still see these shops here. I think this is a pretty good indication. You can also see my player files down here. Now, one thing is this. A lot of times we'll reset your player files depending on how you have it saved. If you have your player files saved in Essentials, it can be a little different. But a lot of times this will reset player files. So just be aware of that. I will show you how to not do that as well. But let's say you want to reset everything. Just wipe your entire server. And to do that, it's pretty simple. So we got proof here. We've got this admin shop stuff here. That is about to disappear. So let's disconnect. Obviously, to reset our world, we need to stop the server. So let's go ahead and stop the server. And then that will close out. And now what we want to do is go to our server folder, right? This is our main server directory where our jar file is, where our EULA file is, all that stuff. In here, we then have world. We have world underscore nether and world underscore the end. To reset these worlds, all you need to do is rename them. So right click on world, for example, and just name it like old underscore world, right? That's going to reset the main world. If you want to reset the nether, come in here again and do old underscore world underscore nether and that's going to reset the nether now you could delete these folders but if you do that they're gone forever so don't do that unless you're for sure what I a lot of times will do is come in here and rename these like old all right like so like let's say we're resetting a faction server and then I will do old world backups I'll create a folder right like this and then let's say you know week two weeks in or something like that into the faction season I will delete this folder at that point or move it locally get it off the server but for now that's there, the worlds are reset. And if we go ahead and start the server jar back up, we'll actually be able to see these world files will regenerate, right? Except they'll be completely new world files. So as you can see, starting up the Minecraft server, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up so you'll be able to see there's that world file regenerating. The one, the old one, is right here still. It's still in our backups folder, but for now we've got this new world. And whenever this is finished starting up, we'll be able to join it in game and those admin shops and that stuff will be gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this prepare the spawn world, do a quick jump cut, and I'll see you once it's done. So there we go, the spawn area is now generated there. So we can drag this again over to the side. We're gonna open up Minecraft once again. Direct connect to that local IP address. And this time, it'll all be gone, right? There will be no chest, there'll be no admin shop. It's completely different looking world. And as I said, our player files are in fact wiped. What if we don't wanna wipe the player files? What do we do? Well, first we need to up ourselves on the server so I can give myself some items to prove that they're not wiped <laughs> whenever we do this. So let's say we wanna reset this world, right? So you've renamed your worlds and now you've got this new world folder and guess what? This new world folder is a new world. However, to reset all your player files, if for whatever reason, I don't know why you would want to do this, but if for whatever reason you didn't wanna reset like all your players' inventories and even their locations, so they will spawn in where they were just in the new world and that can cause for spawning underground and stuff like that. Overall, you don't wanna do this, but it's kinda of cool to know where your player files are at. So I'm gonna go ahead, go into creative real quick, right? So we're gonna go game mode creative and I'm going to spawn in some items for myself just some stuff like that like I think that's a decent amount we've got some golds and birds and things like that now let's go ahead we're going to disconnect obviously we we'll need to again stop the server right stop the server right like so and then let's go ahead and open up our folder here now, if you go into this world folder you'll be able to see you know you've got dim one dim dash one there's a lot of stuff in here and this is actually where your player data is going to be stored in that player data folder um, however overall I wouldn't recommend resetting your you know server and like changing things like that with player and trying to keep player data because that can cause an array of different issues for example we've got this player data file this is my player data file in here you can't read it obviously if you double click on it, this doesn't work but nevertheless this data file right here 
has things like my location in it, like on the server, it has my inventory, and that's cool. But the problem is, let's say I'm in a world right now and I'm underground, or let's say I'm even above ground, right? You reset the world, I join in, I am now in a mountain. And I'm going to die instantly when I join in. There's nothing I can do. And so that is why it is important to always reset the player dot. However, if you didn't want to do that, if you didn't want to do that, what you would do is you would take this player data file, right? And you would just move it out of the server, right? You need to get it completely out of the server. And then you can delete your world, right? Right, like so. Delete that world. Now, this is still going to delete the advancements, right? So if you want to keep the advancements, you would drag that out as well. If you wanted to keep, you know, anything else, player data related, stats from the player, for example, you would drag that out too. And then you would again remove or rename that world folder. So we could do old underscore old, right, like so. And oh, it's, the server is up. That's why it's doing that, right? So we can stop the server and then do rename this. Wait for it. Do, do, do. Let's give it a second. <laughs> there we go. Server stopped. Now we can rename this. Drag that to that backups folder. Start the server again, right? This time, all we want to do though when the server is started is drag these player folders back over, then restart the server again, right? So we're going to let this start up. And then after this is started up, we can actually just go ahead and wait. Well, I guess we need to wait for the world to generate. And once the world generates, we can stop it and bring those folders back over. Quite a complicated process and can cause so many issues, everyone. So I would recommend not doing this. I'm just showing you how to do it. That's where your player files are at. They're in the world folder here. They're in the, you know, advancements, player data, stats folders. That's where they're going to be. But again, I would not recommend anyone doing that. It's just not worth it because you have so much risk. So if you're resetting your world, reset everything. Don't try to keep inventories. Don't try to reset it all. And then you'll be good. Now there are plugins that like to like store inventories externally. An example would be MySQL player data bridge. If you had something like that on your server, then yeah, maybe you could reset inventories or keep inventories after a server reset. Otherwise I wouldn't attempt it. But at this point we can go ahead and stop it and stop the server there. I didn't put anything in my inventory on the server, so it's gonna be kind of hard for me to prove this, but nevertheless, once we're here, we're gonna go ahead and now take that player data folder, right? As well as the advancements and stats folder, and we're gonna take all three of these, drag and drop them over, right like so. And then one more time, restart the server. We'll join in, it'll be yet another new world. And technically our player data is transferred over, but I didn't think about this. There's no way for me to really prove that. Sorry about that. But anyway, always keep backups though. Even if you're doing this with your player data, always keep backups of that player data. Never, ever, ever do anything that you're gonna reset something without keeping the previous thing before you do it. That's even updating plugins. Always keep a previous plugin update, like a previous version of the plugin before you update it. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and let this finish off. I'm gonna do a quick jump cut and uh, then we will be able to join this in game and we'll be good with this video. We'll be done. So anyway, gonna go ahead and let this start on up. Once it's done, I will meet you in game. There we go. Now we can direct connect again to the local IP address. That will log us right on in here. And once we are in game, we're going to be able to see it is a different world. There we go. That's the problem with keeping player data. I'm glad. I think I'm opt on this server so I can do game mode creative and I won't die. But that's the problem. See, I was stuck in this, this block here because we had redid the player data and um, I kept my location and I, that location was now in this block, but this is a different world. So there you all have it. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. You now know how to reset your world on Minecraft server. This also works with the nether. It also works with the end. Just rename those files there. But nevertheless, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'm out. Peace.